Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it's Chaos, and we're back with some Final Fantasy 1 Pixel Remaster. It's, uh, it's been a while since I put one of these out. Um, November 19th, 2021, at that. But uh, I'm doing this voiceover style, because I just recorded it and just said, let's go. So we're checking out, we picked up last episode, we did the Citadel of Trials. And we got our class upgrades from Mr. Bahamut. And so now we're in the city of Onrak. And we're just doing a little shopping here real quick. See if there's anything Wiz can get that doesn't suck. Um, side note, there isn't. Wiz kind of sucks at this level. Um... <clears throat> So yeah, um, I am still looking at the guide that I've been using for this. So it's been pretty useful. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna hit up the, shunk, the Sunken Shrine. We're gonna fight Kraken and I believe we get the Rosetta Stone. Um, so we're gonna hit the sub here and that's gonna take us right down to the Sunken Shrine. Now this shrine is absurd. It's utterly massive and has what is supposed to be the hardest boss in the game. Well, not the hardest boss, the hardest of the fiends. And remember, there's four fiends, four crystals, and we've taken out the other three at this point. So now we'll get some of that fancy remastered music here. And I heard a rumor that they finally updated the PC Pixel remasters to match the console version. So the font has gotten changed. Um, I recorded this well before the update. I recorded this back at the beginning of January. It's February now. All right, so we just had our first battle in the temple here. And we're wandering and getting into a lot of random battles. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm wildly over leveled for this point of the game. Because I just annihilate everything. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of dumb how fast everything is dying right now. It's absolutely absurd. Saw my mouse there for a second because I was flipping over to the guide. I don't know why I couldn't just look at the guide, but there is literally the map for this is five levels and levels two, three, and four have sub levels. So it's like an eight map. That's an eight freaking page size map, and there's a lot of treasure. So we're going to bust through here and get treasure and fight things. As one does in Final Fantasy games. The White Sharks take a little bit of hit. They can, they, they can take two hits for my people. <laughs> the Sahagan just doesn't stand a chance against Mr. Fu there. That man's an absolute, like, Giga Chad. Wiz and Fu just level up there.
So yeah, we're just in here. We're still going through, just checking all the doors and getting all the treasure and just fighting all the enemies. We got a water elemental and a water naga here. Which is just some very classic Final Fantasy 1, because Naga and Fantasy are always water creatures. Like, I don't think I've ever read or played anything where a Naga was not a creature of water. So the fact that they have to explicitly label it a water Naga is silly. But hey, we get to our first set of stairs here, it looks like. And now we're on the Sunken Shrine's second floor, and I immediately go back up. Because I'm looking for another staircase. I uh, remember, I'm looking at a map. Um, for some reason, I pull up the options menu. <laughs> and another shark. I mean, this is... This is random battle system 101 for you. There we go. There's another staircase. It gets up to Sunken Shrine 4th floor, which is just... Beyond confusing. Like, this is a messy dungeon. It's absolutely insane. And you can see I clearly get confused here for a minute because I'm just sitting. And sitting. Yeah. This is a thing. Hang on. All right. And there we go. <laughs> I had to trim a little bit there. There wasn't any point in me sitting there still for another, you know, 10 milliseconds or something like that. Yeah, so we get just get more white sharks. I mean, this is... <laughs> I'm getting to sound repetitive and we're only seven and a half minutes into the video. <laughs> but I kind of don't want to cut too much of the dungeon because, I mean, it is part of the game. So, you know, it's just like, all right, do we just cut out massive chunks of the dungeon because it's not that visually interesting? I don't think so. It's, you know, it's a classic Japanese RPG. You know, dungeon grinds are a massive part of it. Look at that. He barely even touches Fu. Did 89 damage. Like, it's insane. Like, the cumulative damage does start to wear me down a little bit. But, I mean, I have tons of potions. Like, I'm just absolutely loaded. So I just have so many potions. Like, it's dumb. We got, uh, Deep Eyes. Um... Uh, and another shark. And as usual, the shark takes two hits. Man, we're getting like 4,000-ish gil per fight like this. It's kind of wild. Pretty sure does using the frost brand or the whatever... The Frost Sword or Frost Brand, whatever it's called in this game. Uh, we'll explain the ice attacks. Oh, we got some diamond armor there. So we immediately go in here and equip, duh. Yeah, so he's using the ice brand. And we're about to swap his ice armor out for diamond armor and get eight extra points of defense, which is pretty wild. And I think I come in here to look to see if anybody else can take his ice armor. For some reason, I think Wiz can, but, you know, I'm an idiot. The only person who could in my party would be Hand, but he's got the equivalent tier of armor just in the flame armor version. So there was a whole lot of wasted time there looking at the gear. But it had been like a year since I've played, so I couldn't quite remember what I was doing. Got a shark and a white shark. There you go. And yeah, we're just going to continue through the dungeon here. Just, you know, it's a random battle system and your ass going to be hurting. <laughs> As the Dwayne Brando song says. Which if you haven't listened to it, Check out the credit, check out the card at the end of the video and go listen to that song. It's the OG, like, Final Fantasy 1 rap. 
that does honestly does a better job telling the story of the game than the game itself does. I actually don't remember how much of the story I've talked about. I mean, it's pretty basic, because, you know, this is 1988 when this game came out. Or 89, something like that. So, it's it's pretty simple, but, you know, your four characters, they just show up, and they have these darkened crystals, which you can see there on the screen. I have three of them lit up at the time. So, it's pretty cool. And they just show up, and they have no idea who they are or what they're there for. And you wake up at Corneria. And you go and rescue the princess. And you have to take Garland down. <laughs> I'm actually directly quoting the video at this point. The uh, the rap at this point. You have to go take Garland down because he was a good knight who turned bad. And at that point, once you kill him, he gets pulled back in time. And Unleash is four, the four elemental fiends upon the world. And that's who you're chasing around fighting amongst all the other people. You know, like Astos and the Vampire. Like, it's it's pretty crazy. Like, there's actually a, it's actually relatively in-depth because you're trying to break the world out of the time loop. Which, if I remember correctly, is how your characters end up, you know, just where they are at the beginning. Because they're stuck in the time loop, too. So, it's pretty true. It's pretty cool. But yeah, we're just going here to find more treasure. There is a shit ton of treasure in this place. I'm checking my inventory for something here. Oh, I was checking what the mage staff was. Because I thought it was something Wiz could equip. But it turns out it's just a usable item that casts Fyra. Which is cool. And I got the healing staff there, and I'm just checking all my items, see what they do. Of course, I got 84 high potions. <laughs> and I just give up and get bored. High potions are actually something, like, brand new beyond the, uh... The original, like, NES version of the game. The original, you had just potions, and they healed 30 HP. For the entire game, you had 30, you had potions that healed 30 HP. Can you imagine that? You get to these numbers where it's like, duh, has 600 max hit points. That's 20 potions. And you have to collect each one individually. And I don't believe they stacked. I could be I could be misremembering. I don't remember if they stacked or not. It was pretty silly. Like there was not user friendliness back in those days. I picked up something else. Wasn't paying attention though. Oh no, I was going to potions. Yeah, because I looked at the HP there. It was just like, oh, okay, that's a lot of cumulative damage where. I don't quite top everybody off to full, but we get close enough for this. Close, close enough for government work. There we go. 12,000 12, gil in that chest. Imagine if you just opened a chest in your house one day and just found $12,000. <laughs> that would be absolutely insane. There we go. We come up to this next floor here, and we find the mermaids. Um, there's mermaids here. I mean, it is the ocean shrine, and we are technically actually underwater at the moment. But this is a big room full of rooms that have either chests or mermaids or monsters in them. 9,000 gil, 1,700 gil, diamond armlet. I believe that goes to Fu. If I remember correctly. No, I might go to Wiz. Oh, no. No, I definitely give it to Fu. Because he goes from 26 to 45 defense. And considering you equip nothing else on Fu, that's absolutely massive. So. So you see there's breaks in the platforms here to keep you from just, like, 
easily checking all the rooms. You kind of have to work your way around. It's very maze-like. For some reason, I talked to that mermaid twice. Another mermaid. You can breathe underwater. How? How? Oxhale. Another chest. 2,700 gil. Another mermaid. Save the sea. Restore light to the water crystal. Oh my god. Yes, your mermaid ship. 4,100 gil. Are those the crystals the legends speak of? Huh. Five thousand gil. The light of the sea is not restored. We will vanish something. More gill. I think at this point I'm trying to find my way around because I got a little lost here. Oh, the Mirage Tower stands in the desert. I saw someone go into the tower. I heard the most lovely chiming sound. I don't think I've done Mirage Tower yet, actually. I think that comes next. Or shortly afterwards. Checking gear again. I'm very much getting lost at this point because it's just like, all right, hang on. How do, how do these platforms work? And of course, now we're about to defy the laws of physics. Screen wrapping. Look at that. Look at that fancy screen wrap to get up here. <laughs> like the last couple of rooms we have to screen wrap for. Diamond helm, diamond gloves, and the Rosetta Stone. There it is. And there's a town that that's going to help us translate for. Um, I think it's Lufina, if I remember correctly. And now we screen wrap back to the other side. They created a room that you couldn't get all the way through and get all the treasure in without defying physics. You gotta love it. I feel like we're getting close to Kraken at this point. But I could very well be long, wrong looking at the length of the video. <laughs> I think there's just more wandering right now. It's kind of silly. This dungeon is way too big. Like, it's way too big for how empty it is. Like, this kind of dungeon design would not fly these days. Oh, is this another point where I get confused and I'm looking at the map for 10 minutes? I hope not. Got a big crowd here, so we're going to try and use some magic and hit him with some Thundara. Does a decent amount of damage. Not enough to be worth the spell slot it costs, though. And the trolls also heal. Not by a lot, they only heal 10 points every so often. Which is minuscule amounts of points. Because, you know, does swing in 300. Wiz is swinging 215. 
Like, yeah, you can have your 10 hit points back. Sure. Sunken Shrine, third floor. So we're almost back to where we started. <laughs> Rip another water, Naga. I honestly don't think anywhere in the game I've seen another type of Naga. Like, is there Earth Naga? Are there Air Naga? I don't think so. I think they're just Water Naga, which in that case, just call them Naga. Like, Final Fantasy 1, why? Alright, now we're making some progress here. Because you're going down in the dungeon, if it wasn't obvious, by the completely haphazard way you navigate this thing. Like, you're going down towards Kraken. And I'm looking at the map here for a second, trying to bring up a big full screen map, but apparently that's not a thing. See, one of the problems is the, uh, the guide I'm using is an original NES guide. Now the content's the same, but the maps, you know, they look like they're from NES, which means they don't have near as much detail. It's hard to see. We got some ghosts here. One of them paralyzes Wiz. But other than that, they're basically just roadblocks. Like, they're speed bumps, not roadblocks. They're speed bumps. We're going to do some healing here, I believe. Because I think I realize that my HP is getting low again, at least on Duh. That was an unnecessary high potion there, Chaos. Used a high potion to heal hand for like 16 hit points. I'm not a smart man sometimes. Flash, they try to blind me. They succeed in blinding Da and Fu, but it does them no good. Like those two Giga Chads just don't care. Like, the other guys help too, but you know, it's mostly, it's mostly duh and foo doing all the work in this party. Like, let's just be 100% here. Sea snake and the sea troll. One of them did six damage, you see that? Big numbers. See, I think the class upgrades, um, Duh goes from being a fighter to a knight. Hand goes from thief to ninja. Wiz goes from red mage to red wizard. And Fu goes from black belt to master, if I remember correctly. So they just, they, they, they pull a Frieza and achieve their final forms. Except it's actually good for them. So, you know. So yeah, we went just some loop. Now we're gonna keep traveling around. More ghosts. And there we go. 
Han does some pretty significant damage too with his ice weapons, but you know. Wiz is kind of just there in case we ever actually need magic. Which, with the physical prowess that these characters have, is not very often. I actually just looked over at the guide on my other screen here, and we're actually getting pretty close to the end of the game. Sahagan Prince, White Sharks. Something else that died too fast to matter. Get some sea snakes. We kill some sea snakes. Just this is what we do. We murder things. Like just four giga chads enter a dungeon and just stomp on all over the native wildlife. It's kind of goofy. You gotta love RPGs. Like, they make zero sense. Monsters in a chest. Look at that. There was three water elementals in a chest. Had to be a tight fit. I mean, they are water. But still, it's a lot of water elemental. Scorpions and troll. You know the drill by now. Murder. With the side of murder. Nothing lasts long against this party. They're, I have got to be drastically over leveled by this point in the game. And this is without the peninsula of power, which just is not a thing at the pixel remaster. I think I mentioned that one in the earlier videos. So there used to be in the old game because the enemies you could fight were based on quadrants, or I think it was divided into six hexes, or six squares. And there was a small peninsula that bordered into a much higher level square, and you could farm levels in like a four, in a four tile gap. And it was freaking insane. But I think they fixed that in the remaster because they didn't have to be as budget with how they broke up the map. More water elementals in a chest, in case anybody's keeping track. If you had water elementals in a chest on your bingo card, go ahead and check it off. Ba, 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 ba. 
1300 gil. Monsters! Hey, not water elementals. Mummies. Mummy, king mummy, pyrolesks, and cockatrices. This encounter actually had to make me think for a minute. Because I was just like, alright, what are we going to do here? And then I realized that the cockatrices do almost no damage. Like, negligible amounts of damage. Where they might as well not even be doing damage. For some reason, I decided to try to silence them all. I'm not entirely sure why. Murdering birds. Because, you know, they're not real. Birds aren't real. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I feel like there's absolutely no reason to come into the equipment menu here. See, Wiz and Foo are getting close to leveling up again, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I came in to use some of Wiz's magic to cure things for some reason. And then I realized just how utterly pointless it is. Well, I mean, he's got nine level one spell slots, and we don't use any level one spells anymore. Like, you know, it's like, okay. Then I got bored and didn't feel like dealing with squeeze scorpions and ran away. I think at this point I decided to start running from the vast majority of the wild encounters. See snakes and trolls in a chest. I don't know how they fit that many trolls and snakes and scorpions inside of a single chest. It's pretty wild. So hopefully everybody's having a good 2024 by this point. I can't believe we're already a month in. Like, I'm ready for time to go back to being real. Like, 2020 killed time and is just whipping the corpse. Like, there we go. Foo and Wiz get their level up, so we get the Light Axe. Hand needs a poison cure. Thankfully, I have plenty of antidotes. Come in here looking for potions again. Apparently I decided not to try to equip the light axe. Snakes, flee, flee, flee.
There's this guy. He's just one of those, like, he's just a bunch of bot. He's just a bunch of monsters in a robe. Like, I don't remember what he is yet, but we'll see here in a second. And then I just spam damage on the trolls, knowing that the game will auto-compensate. That's used to not be a thing. Um, you used to not be able to queue up all your attacks on a single enemy. Because once it died, the attacks would not move on to different enemies. Found a ribbon in that chest. And yeah, this guy was two sharks and a Sahagan prince in a trench coat. Explain that, please. Square. Explain that. <laughs> At this point, I was laughing. I'm just like, why were you even here? Like, what was the point of that guy? <laughs> like, you see something like that, you're expecting, like, a difficult encounter. It's like, oh, cool, this is an enemy that I can choose to ignore. It's like, no. I mean, yes, you could choose to ignore it, but it's just like, he's just pointless. Like, there was no reason for that man to be there. First floor. Now we mean business here. Come on, past chaos. We mean business. Get moving. To this point, past chaos looks at the map for a little while before figuring out where he's going. <laughs> There's a lot of that. We're getting real close to cracking now. Like, real close. First floor is the last floor. I know. But we came in from the top, remember? We came in from the top, so the first floor is the last floor. Looks like Hand got himself poisoned again. And I realize it right here. <laughs> and we go grab some high potions. do something absolutely goofy here in a second. I use a quick save because the guide tells me Kraken is the hardest boss. The, har the hardest of the elemental fiends, not the hardest boss. I keep saying that. Single sea troll. What do you think, guys? Is he gonna win? Ah, shit. Oh, shark. Oh, and he ambushed us this time. Oh, man. One damage. Duh doesn't take damage anymore. <laughs> I get a little lost in here because I couldn't find the door. Like... Thinking about it, these dungeons are laid out a lot like classic like D&D style maps where there's just like, yep, we threw walls in. And then we threw doors in because you had to navigate places. Deep eyes and a white shark. Do zero damage. Not zero, but you know. Barely worth mentioning damage. Find our way out of that big room. And right up here, we get to Mr. Kraken. <laughs> and I do something so goofy, because I'm expecting a hard boss fight. <laughs> If anybody knows, because it's been a long time since I played FF1, am I horribly overleveled? 
or did they just make the game easier with the pixel remaster? Look at this. Look, look at the silliness right here. Watch this. <sighs> Quick save. <laughs> I'm expecting a hard fight. I went and quick saved. Look at that. And here's Kraken. <laughs> you humans do impress. I would not have thought to see you this below, far below the sea or something to that effect. Kraken. Do you really think you'd defeat the fiend of water here in my own domain? Dun, 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 dun. Yes, I do. Yes, I do, Kraken. I think I'm checking his weaknesses here, which should be obvious. Lightning. <laughs> and his weakness is also my horribly overleveled party. I'm gonna go for so Thundara over here, I believe. No, I put haste on duh first. Yep. And he inked does, who's now blind. Like, he's literally just got high physical resistance here. But it just makes zero difference, because we just pummel the shit out of him. There we go. He inked everybody else this time. Now we're all a little blinded. For some reason, I decided to try Blizzara on him. Once again, still expecting a very difficult fight here. And there we go. There is the mighty fiend of water. <laughs> Who I quote from the guide here. Boss battle Kraken, Fiend of Water. This is arguably the most difficult of the four fiends in FF1. Like, really? He was the most difficult? <laughs> there we go. We reactivate the crystal. We restore the power to it. The altar of water, for which the power blocks something flows. Water puns. And we leave the dungeon. And that's it, guys. That is the Temple of Water in Final Fantasy 1, the Pixel Remaster. I'll see you next time.